Welcome to Amcom Solutions, Jake here. So could Meshtastic get targeted by this kind of anti-encryption, anti-privacy environment that we really have just kind of nosedived into in 2025? The short answer is no, or at least not yet. We're gonna look into how possibly that could happen. And because you're gonna, probably saying to yourself right now, if you understand Metastatic at all and other similar tools is it's decentralized. So how could they target it? And we'll, we'll look at that here in a minute. We're going to take a look at the environment and kind of the bag of goods we keep getting sold. And then we'll look at see how they could target Metastatic or something similar. So the environment, unless you're living in Iraq, you've probably heard something about the UK's Online Safety Act which in my opinion is just censorship hidden behind the word safety. And it doesn't, it in itself is internet based. So it does not target something like Mestastic. It creates an environment of and precedence for ever increasing controls over what we do, how we communicate. There's also a proposed bill or act called the EU chat control. And this has been kicking around for a while now. And it looks like it's going to get voted on a, again in October of 2025. So this year, not too far from now, which basically would give them full control over any messaging applications you use with no expectation of privacy. Be, you know, giving government agencies a backdoor to messages before they're encrypted uh, on both ends. So, yes, we can trust them and there is no danger of these databases getting breached and your information getting sold off to the whole world. But, hey, let's just not worry about that. It's all about safety. Um, and then you may be one of my viewers in the U.S., which is the majority of you and think, well, we haven't, we don't have anything like this. And you're right, we don't yet, but there is a desire for it. And there is some contradicting statements from agencies like the FBI where they've said, hey, private citizens should be using end-to-end -end encrypted messaging applications because, you know, in this scammer world, you know, there is, they're more and more sophisticated. So you need to be protecting your information. And a lot of times people share sensitive information that could be, you know, PII, personal identifying information uh, that you share with a, a loved one because they're at the doctor's office and trying to fill out a form and they don't have somebody's social security number or birth date or this or that. So, yeah, um, you should be using encryption for that as long as they have a back door to where they can see what's sent before it's encrypted. This is all being sold under the child safety umbrella. And I'm a father and I do believe that there's things that should be done to help protect our children from predators online. This leads me to a quote that I think is very fitting for today's topic from Stanford Beer. The purpose of the system is what it does, not what it claims to do. And if you pay attention at all, there's many laws, especially in the U.S., that get sold to us with some great fluffy language. You know, usually the word safety is involved. There's something like that that sounds, you know, how could you be opposed to this? And once, it's, once the law is enacted, we usually figure out that it doesn't increase safety. Uh, it erodes our freedoms. It gives our government more control and usually hits us in the pocketbook. There's always some sort of taxations involved in these because they cost money. We're being sold a bag of goods because really, like I said, the purpose of the system is what it does, not what it claims to do. Then you add in the average citizen, the, the squawking heads. Well, only criminals use encryption. What do you have to hide? But I have nothing to hide. And these slogans are used to guilt you into thinking that it is bad to have privacy. And I, it's a constant barrage of, of this information. 
Therefore, some people that don't fully understand think, yeah, sure, it, it, it is bad. Like, yeah, I heard criminals use encryption. Not even fully understanding that, like, if they do anything online, online banking, medical, paying their utility bill online, there's usually some sort of encryption, especially when we're talking financial transactions involved there to protect you from being scammed. Um, additionally, they also don't understand what social engineering is, and I'm no cybersecurity expert, but I do at least understand the basics. And the more information a nefarious party has, the easier it is for them to social engineer you. Nor do they understand backdoors. Once there's a backdoor created in a system, it doesn't matter if that's you know, being maintained by a private entity or a government agency, that is now a vulnerability because once that data has been, once it's been, that database has been breached, now the breacher has a gold mine of information they can mine out and steal and use for nefarious purposes. Is this making us safer? Is uploading a picture of your uh, government ID everywhere you go to open an account when they claim that maybe they're going to get rid of it and it's only used for verification purposes and this and that, so on and so forth, really going to make you safer? I don't know. History really hasn't supported that argument. And speaking of data breaches, statistics.com in 2024 reported over 3,100 data compromises that affected over 1.3 billion people in the U.S. I, 2025 is not over yet, but I imagine we're going to see probably similar numbers, if not higher, because the sophistication of these scams and attacks are is getting better and better, especially now that AI is becoming full of the trade. And if you haven't gotten the messages, the, the AI voices yet, maybe you don't realize they're AI voices, but they're pretty tricky. So, and so I digress there, but what would be the pathway? What, and a good example would be what happened in the UK after the Online Safety Act took effect? VPN or virtual private network usage skyrocketed. Now what is their government doing? They're trying to figure out a way that they can ban or restrict the use of VPNs. A tool that's used to help protect you that is fairly effective, it's not flawless, to protect your information, especially when you're using things like public Wi-Fi and is now going to they want to remove your tool to help protect yourself because it's all about your safety but is it what i was getting at there is people look for other ways once things something's been banned or restricted and with apps like TikTok being banned or potentially getting banned in the u.s you know that's been going back and forth what happens whoever owns the application store the app store removes it or blocks it from being used on your phone. Well, Mestastic has an application. So if for some reason something like a chat control act takes place and then all of a sudden people start using something like Mestastic more, could it become a target? Potentially, I would say yes. If there's enough usage to and bring attention uh, from the right people to think, okay, well, this is, we can't control this. It's decentralized. There's no cloud servers. There's no data going across the internet. How can we block it? Well, there's a couple avenues. Like they could have the FCC block or say that you can't use encryption in the IMS bans now in the U.S., uh, therefore, you would run the risk if you did of, you know, potentially becoming a target of law enforcement. Um, or they could ban the application from the App Store. Now, you might be saying, well, Jake, I am an Android user and I can sideload an APK file on your phone. And yes, you can for right now. If you haven't heard the announcement from Android, they're going to follow 
the footsteps of Apple and make it to where you can't use applications unless they're on the approved list in their store. Basically, they've been deemed safe for use. Well, you spend all that hard-earned money on a phone you really don't own, and we probably all, most of us probably already know that, but it's the same thing with computers these days. But banning the application could be problematic. There is some options there, like a de-Google phone, something running Graphene OS, and there's quite a few companies now, it seems like they've been increasing over time, uh, that are now selling these. So what do you guys think? I'd really like to hear your feedback on this one. I understand that Mistastic probably is is not in any immediate danger, and maybe it never will, um, but I'd like to hear your feedback on this one. I also want to encourage you to continue to learn and use decentralized communications equipment. It's the only way you can really control your information. So if you like what we're doing here today, please hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, check out all of our uh, social media links, website links, affiliate links, that type of stuff all down below, all the resources I use for today's video. Thanks for watching.